uh, they want this classroom here and we are pushed out before that happens that we are being pushed out I would be rather giving you an hour of questions and answers than to carry on in this fashion so with these words Mr. Chairman ladies and gentlemen I leave myself open to you all for questioning yes my son you know in the Islamic you know scriptures you know you know what, what will occur before the last days according to, to your scriptures what will occur yes. and let's worry about the last day what will occur this is everything is occurring is a sign that you're leading towards destruction what do you see around you are signs that you're inviting destruction See, Jimmy Swaggart in his book on homosexuals, he says, he says, America, he says, God will judge you. God must judge you, he's telling. These are his words. If he doesn't judge you for what is going on, he says, God will ha might have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah for what he done to them. These are his words, sir. Professor White, these are his words. You know, he says, God will judge you, America, and if he doesn't judge you, that will destroy you. If you don't depend and come right straight away. If you don't, he says he will have, he might, he said, he's actually his words, he, I'm, he might, God might have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah for what he had done to them. This is the situation. So these are signs that you are about to destroy yourself. You're committing suicide. Is there a Messiah that, that's coming? In, in your yes, life? yes, the Messiah is coming. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back to judge you for having strayed from the path. You see, you read in the Gospel of St. Matthew. Jesus says, he says, many will say to me on that day, the last day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name and in thy name cast out devils? You know, missionaries, they're doing beautiful work. They say, no, we heal the sick and the blind and the lepers and, you know, we give life back to the dead. Instead of going to the hospitals, they just keep on doing their stages. I said, look, go to the hospitals, man, the lunatic asylums, free them all. No, no, no. They're not interested in the hospitals. They're not interested in the lunatics. When you come to his meeting, only then he will give this gift to you. And he said, they're doing it in the name of Christ. You see, they go to Indonesia. They go to Malaysia. They go to the Philippines. They build orphanages, hospitals. Uh, they, they build schools. Everything they're doing for who? For Christ. So they will say, and performing miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. He says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name do many mighty works? Jesus says, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Foot sack, get away. You're rubbish, I don't even know you. I am asking learned Christians, DDs, doctors of divinity, philosophers of religion, I'm asking them, why would Jesus tell you foot sack, get away, rubbish? You! Not the Jews. He won't say, you Jews, get away. You Muslims, rubbish, get away. I don't know you. You Hindus, run away. You atheists, kill communists, run away. No, no. He says, you who are calling him Lord, Lord, and you did all these things in his name, he's coming to rectify you because you have gone off the track. He, has, he had come to take us to God, make us to worship God. We left God and started worshipping him. Christendom is worshipping Jesus Christ. A child born in the stable to a Jewish girl, circumcised on the eighth day, like any other Jewish child, you know what is circumcision? Do you know what is circumcision? You know what is circumcision? Yes. yes. Are you circumcised? No. no. What do you know about circumcision? What is circumcision? No. This is, what is that? I don't know what it is. Yes. You see, circumcision, circum in English means right round. Incise means to cut. Circumcision means to cut right round. What? the flesh in front of the male organ it is cut right round the skin is removed the foreskin the Jews do it the Muslims do it see and other people do it for hygienic reasons they have problems and they get circumcised they have problems and they go to hospital get circumcised Jesus Christ was circumcised you know that see Luke chapter 2 verse 23 says when he was eight days old he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb so he was circumcised. Now you can't circumcise a child with your mouth. You say circumcise. And the guy gets circumcised. It doesn't happen that way. You have to hold the little child, you know, by his little penis. You have to loosen the skin the, from the gland. Because if you cut the gland, the guy will be useless for life. You know that? Huh? So they have to take precaution. 
with the Jews take, we take precaution. And you mean to say this is your God, somebody holding him by a little tool, your God that? No, no, your brains. I want to know, where is your brains? Can anybody hold God by his tool? Your mind. Suppose you were a nurse. You can imagine any situation. The human mind can imagine anything. In the stable you're helping Mary when she's delivering the child. When you see the helpless, puny little creature with all the food and the muck coming out of his mother's womb. Can you for one moment think that that is your Jehovah? Your God that? Your mind, mind, your mind. I want you to tell me honestly. Your mind when you're seeing and helping this puny little creature. Your God? The mind says no. This child who drinks milk from his mother's breast also wets his napkins. Your God? Wetting napkins. Man who eats food also excretes. Anybody, whether it's a Moses or a Jesus or a Muhammad, if you eat, you must excrete. You have a call of nature. You run to the toilet. And if there's no toilet, you run behind the bush. You run behind rocks. God running behind rocks, run behind bushes. No. But what has happened to you? The man is telling you. He says, worship God. Come, I will teach you how to pray. He said, pray like this. Oh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Where did he say the Father of Jesus Christ in heaven? He is crying to God on the cross. If you remember, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He is God. Is he crying to himself? Is he putting on an act? What is happening to you? What are you reading? He's crying to somebody else and you say, he's God. That means he's putting up an act. Is he acting? Play acting? No. The man never said, I'm God. He says, my father is greater than I. He said, my father is greater than all. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. I can do nothing of myself. He says, the word you hear are not mine, but the father that sent me. He had given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak, even as the father had sent unto me, so I speak. Of that day you know what no man, no, not the angels, not the sun, but the Father in heaven. Where does he say he is God? Where does he say he is equal to God? Where? There isn't. In this whole vast scripture, there isn't a single statement anywhere, in any version of the Bible, where Jesus says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. And yet, 1,200 million Christians are programmed, brainwashed to say, he is God. So, my son, he is coming back to judge you. Who, whoever says that Jesus is Lord, Lord, he is coming to judge you for that. He is not Lord. The Lord is God in heaven. The Father in heaven. He is the only true God. And Jesus Christ was sent by God. This is the question. Yes? Um, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about your exclusion of Buddhism from the world's major universal missionary religions. Um, and also your many statements about Islam being the only religion that such and such would similarly exclude Buddhism. You said Islam is the only religion that uh, prohibits drinking alcohol. The Buddhist scriptures uh, require that people not drink alcohol. Um, why do all religions have to be Semitically rooted religions and why do all Asian religions and specifically Buddhism have to be excluded? Uh, I think you came in a little late. Did you? Were you from the beginning here? Right. So if you remember, sir, that I said we can safely divide, divide the religions of the world into two major groups. I said the Aryan religions and the Semitic religions. Now, if you, I said these Aryan religions, Zoroastrianism, Hinduism, Buddhism. Then I said the Semitic religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Since the bulk of the people here are bit among the Semites, I couldn't recognize a single Buddhist here or a single Hindu here, a single Zoroastrian here. It was a waste of time. If I'm going to start telling you about the difference between Hinduism and Buddhism and between Buddhism and Islam, see, if he started going to all that, I said I was given one hour in which to deliver the goods. And since we are more concerned, is this environment here, America, I take it there are three major religions in this country. In the order of numbers, Christianity, Judaism and Islam. Buddhism, I don't know how many Buddhists are here in this country. Probably more than Muslims. Possible, we are four million. At least. I haven't heard of a single Buddhist preacher in this country. I hear about Sun Myung Moon. I heard about Father Divine. About Swami Parvupada, Maharishi, Guru Maharaj. I heard them all, that you had them here. See, and they created movement. I've never heard of a single Buddhist. Maybe they're too silent, they're too passive. 
they didn't deserve, you know, me wasting my breath on them. They are not a challenge anyway. In the world, in my country, no Buddhists. You see, in India, the land of his birth is thrown out, kicked out, never to return. That's Buddhism. So, you know, there are some people in the Far East, Buddhists, Chinese Buddhists, you know, maybe Japanese Buddhists, but they are not a world religion in the sense, I said missionary religions, in the sense that Christianity and Islam are. These both are vying for the soul, hearts and souls of mankind, not There's Buddhists. Another thing that's occurring in this country, which is a very, very lively Buddhist-Christian dialogue. Um, there's a major international conference occurring just a short distance from here in Berkeley next summer, where Buddhists and Christians from all over the world are going to engage in a Buddhist-Christian dialogue. 